Hey, DocSig here to talk about how to name ionic compounds. We'll discuss crossover charge method and go from individual ions to formulas and even name them. All right, let's get started. When we're given individual ions, one thing we have to remember is when we combine them, the charge is going to be neutral. So positive charges are going to equal negative charges. We're going to start off with like charges. So the exact same opposite charge. So plus one with negative one, plus two with negative two. Sodium chloride or Na plus plus Cl minus. When we combine them, it would be NaCl. All right, now note, you see it's capital Na, element symbol, capital C, L, element symbol. All right, we don't bring ones down in chemistry. Calcium plus two, sulfur negative two, when we cross those charges down, yes, the twos come down. Now we don't bring the sign, we just bring the number, but we're gonna simplify them. So both those twos can be divided by two, and we were left with CAS. AL plus three plus PO4 negative three. There we go, there's a polyatomic. Threes will cross and come down, leaving the sign positive negative up. Just bring the three. We can simplify those by dividing by three, and we're left with AlPO4. Lithium plus Cn minus, again, another polyatomic. We would wind up with Li, capital C, capital N, because that's the polyatomic, so LiCn. That was if they have the exact same opposite charges. What about if they have different charges? We're gonna do the cross dropping, again, emitting the sign plus or negative, and here we go. So Na plus S2 minus. The plus one on the Na, right? We don't really write one, so we don't worry about that. That would go to the S. The two minus would go to the sodium. And so we'd wind up with Na2S. Ni plus two plus PO4 minus three. The two from the nickel goes onto the polyatomic. And now, because we have a more than one polyatomic, we need to house that with parentheses, okay? So the two would go on the outside of the parentheses of the PO4, and then the three of the PO4 would go in between the Ni and the parentheses housing the polyatomic. So Ni3, parentheses, PO4, close parentheses, two. Al plus three, plus O minus two. The three from the aluminum goes down to the oxygen. The negative two comes in between the Al and the O, giving us Al2O3. Li plus plus CO3 two minus. The plus one goes onto that polyatomic CO3 two minus, but we don't need a parentheses, it's only one. And then the two from the polyatomic goes between the Li and the polyatomic CO3. So we wind up with Li2CO3. What if we are given the ions, we need to make the formula and name it. Let's go. Na plus Cl minus, we've done this, right? NaCl would be the formula. The compound name would be sodium chloride, the IED ending for the anion. And if you need more understanding of that, I'll link the video for naming anions there. Mg plus two F minus gives us Mg F2, magnesium fluoride. CO plus 2, NO2 minus. Okay, then we wind up with CO, parentheses, NO2, 2. And now cobalt is in the transitional region, multivalent, so we have to do cobalt 2 nitrite. The nitrite comes from the polytonic name. Al plus 3, P minus 3, put them together like charges, ALP, aluminum phosphide. Now we're going to have the formula. I want to get the ions and then go to the compound name. CuSO4, I'm going to split those coppers with the element there. So Cu and I'm going to leave that there. I don't know the charge on that. That's multivalent. The SO4 is a polytonic. I know the charge. That's two minus. So if there's no numbers between the Cu and the SO4, no parentheses, that copper has to be a plus two. So now when I name it copper two sulfates. 
ALOH3, well, the aluminum is a known charge. It's a plus three. And the hydroxide from the polyatomic, minus one. So naming this aluminum hydroxide. I don't need to put a parentheses on the charge or Roman numerals on the charge on the aluminum because it's a known charge. This one gets people. SNO2. First, take it apart. We know oxygen's a minus two charge. That's from that group 16, minus two. There's not a two between the SNO2. That means it got simplified. So how would I make that, that it would be simplified to not have that two from the oxygen between the tin and the oxygen? Well, because tin's a plus four. So when tin's four goes to the oxygen and the two from the oxygen goes to the tin, right? So I'd have SN2O4, simplify that to now get SNO2. So naming that tin four oxide. This one also gets students. AgC2H3O2. Oh man, they don't know where to split that. Split it at the first element, the first, the cation. The cations always go first. So right there, split between the Ag and the rest of it. The rest of it's polyatomic. Silver is a known charge, plus one. The acetate or polyatomic, C2H3O2, known charge, minus one. So we name it silver acetate. Again, no Roman numerals on silver because it's a known charge. Last thing, I'm going to give you the compound name. We're going to go to the individual ions and then the formula. Calcium iodide. All right, calcium, we know the charge, group two, plus two charge. Iodine, group 17, minus one charge. So when I cross over, the calcium plus two goes on the I, and the one from the iodine goes on the calcium, which we don't write. So CaI2. Lead to phosphide. Well, lead is a transitional metal, and it has a Roman numeral, so that's the charge. So lead plus two. Phosphide, known group charge, negative three. So Pb3, P2, when they've crossed over. Lithium cyanide. Lithium plus one, we know its group, plus one charge in that group. Cyanide, know it, the polyatomic charge, negative one. So Li plus Cn minus one come together, same charge, LiCn. Zinc carbonate. Zinc, one of those charges you gotta know and remember. Zn plus two. And then the carbonate polyatomic charge, CO3 minus two. Same charges, put them together, ZnCO3. All right, that's it. Have a good one.